The standard level of energy needed to split a water molecule for hydrogen generation has never exceeded 99% efficiency. Therefore, is a system claiming over 2,000% efficiency just too good to be true? Today, we're surrounded by technologies that were once considered too good to be true. However, individual opinions never stop these technologies from moving forward, generating commerce, and setting our current landscape. Efficiency is a calculation based on output energy over input energy. Unfortunately, we may be inclined to limit that equation to 100-year-old physics. Due to current technologies, we must agree that there are natural energy sources and reactions that do boost energy or deliver free energy. For example, pockets of high and low atmospheric pressure causing air movement, a natural energy harvest mainly by wind turbines. Thermal energy from our sun, a natural energy harvested by solar panels. Natural occurring water movement in rivers and sea is a kinetic energy harvested mainly by electric generating turbines. Water being a high viscosity substance has the ability to rotate large turbines with greater force than wind. Gravity and tides movement caused by the moon provide the kinetic energy. Nuclear energy may be categorized as a natural energy since it's energy obtained from heavy metals found in the Earth's crust. Uranium naturally decays and undergoes spontaneous fission at a very slow rate, emitting radiation. The fissile isotope of heavy metals like uranium are unstable and therefore can be manipulated and converted into an enormous amount of thermal energy. It's not a free energy, as with the first three examples, but the energy required to prepare, trigger, and control the reactions is much less than the energy released. Earth's unique force field that we use for navigation is an energy that's not yet been and may never be harvested. Since most kinetic propelled generators use magnetic fields to generate electricity, man is searching for the potential to harvest energy from the enormous magnetic field surrounding the Earth. Heat, light, sound, and electric are all forms of energy produced in a lightning strike. A single bolt of lightning can release between 1 billion and 10 billion joules with a current intensity of 30,000 to 50,000 amps. On average, the energy equals 145 liters of petrol. Every minute throughout the world, well in excess of 300 lightning strikes occur. That equals a total fueling of 1,000 cars per minute. However, the harvesting and storage of lightning is not a simple task. Galvanic energy is a form of electrochemical energy commonly revealed in batteries. Similar to nuclear, galvanic energy is provided through manipulation of metals found in Earth's crust, but with a uniform reaction. The key to galvanic energy is through dissimilar metals. The chemical reactions in the battery causes an excess buildup of electrons at the anode. Ions are formed and the zinc atoms lose their electrons, which flow out through the circuit to the atoms of the copper electrode. This flow of electrons produce a current that delivers useful power. This process continues until the electrolyte is completely transformed. At that point, the ions stop moving through the electrolyte and the battery dies. All these energy sources are naturally occurring and only require an apparatus to harvest. They are not to be confused with the theory of perpetual motion, where kinetic energy is somehow increased with reaction-free mechanical energy. They are, in themselves, a source of energy. H2 Innovation Lab has utilized one of these energies in a method of efficient hydrogen generation. The method outputs 22 times the input energy purely because of the natural galvanic energy enhancing the process. Just the same as nuclear reactions produces more energy than the energy needed to produce the reactions and fueled by a source obtained from the natural energy accumulated in metals. Galvanic energy is the boost reaction deployed within this enhanced electrolysis method of hydrogen generation. But since the electrolyte is refreshed, this galvanic reaction does not die as do batteries. In conventional electrolysis, one part oxygen and two parts hydrogen is released. However, in this enhanced method, the released oxygen atom bonds with the preconditioned electrolyte to boost the galvanic reaction, increasing the cell voltage. In effect, the oxygen atom turns the cell into a battery to supply its own electricity. As the voltage increases, the process of water molecule splitting also increases, not only producing more hydrogen, but also more oxygen, which in turn increases the galvanic reaction. However, since there's only one oxygen atom for every two parts hydrogen atom within a molecule of water, a small amount of external power is required as a catalyst to sustain the reaction. The ability to self-charge is evident when the external power is removed. 
a large voltmeter displays the voltage directly across the cell. A stored galvanic charge that is powerful enough to run an electric motor. The stored charge will gradually decrease over some 20 minutes and the cell keeps releasing hydrogen. A simple, controllable, and safe energy source with absolutely no side effects to the environment or our health. The fuel is freely delivered by rain, rivers, or the vast sea. It works and it is stable. Producing huge quantity of usable hydrogen gas and powered by its own energy. The ultimate reusable energy source. To learn more, please visit the H2 Innovation Lab website.